everyone is looking for love. And they're desperate to find it. We must show them love. We must introduce them to love, to Jesus. To Jesus. For this is true revival. Love is all they need. Everlasting love. Rise up and go and show them love. Revival love. Supernatural love. Jesus is love. Hi, my name's Patricia King, and I'm glad that you've joined me for today's program. You know, the Bible says that if you trust in the prophets, you'll succeed. James Gall, my guest on today's program, is going to give us seven clear prophetic statements for this season. These God-inspired prophetic decrees will position you for great blessings in your life at this time. Enjoy them. At one of the Women on the Frontlines conferences a couple of years ago, perhaps, I gave a message on finding hope rediscovering life after tragedy. And a part of my journey, in all of our journeys, I've been trying to find my roots. And I've been trying to discover that which brings life to me. And before I was ever a preacher, before I was ever an intercessor, before I was ever an intergalactical prophet. <laughs> Before I was ever a champion for women, I sang the songs of Zion. So my first declaration is this. The door of the harvest is open. Of course, in the book of Joel, it says, put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. And we know from Matthew 9, 38, and from Luke 10, 2, that Jesus is the one who teaches his disciples how to pray. And he says, and he teaches them to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he might send forth laborers into the field. I have a word to tell to you right now. Every day is the day of salvation. But there are times and seasons in God, times we plant seeds, times we water, times that it grows, and then it's harvest time. I am not saying this is the great final harvest, but I am declaring this. The door of the harvest is open. I want you to put your hand on your heart right now and lift up your loved ones. We agree right now that the Lord of the harvest sends laborers across the field of our loved ones. And we send forth your word, and we declare it will not return void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which this prayer and the declaration of these words are being sent forth, whether through God TV or through any medium in every manner, because prayer has no distance. It's time once again for the hour of prayer. Isaiah 62, 6 and 7. I have appointed watchmen on the walls who will give themselves no rest and give him no rest until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And it's true. It is true. It is the only city in this entire book that all people of all times 
are called to pray for by name. Matthew 26, 40 is very interesting because this is when Jesus speaks to some of his disciples and he says, could you not tarry with me an hour? We've had many different prayer movements. It's probably all been one great prayer movement with many different phases, starting in around the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, I don't believe it has culminated yet. I don't believe it has peaked yet. But there are three great streams, three great, in a way, tributaries to this prayer stream and worship stream. The prayers of the local church. The networks of prayer, provincially, statewide, nationally, and international. And the houses of prayer. And we must see these three tributaries of the one great stream brought together in this hour. So I declare into the global prayer movement a no competition zone. We are moving into the season of some of the greatest divine cooperation where prayer is wedded with missions. And he declared, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. And so shall it be in the last week of his earthly ministry by the Spirit in the last days. He shall come again to visit his father's house. He will turn over the money changing tables. He will go to the cage where the ceremonial dove is there and he will open it up and set the dove of God free. Praise will break out amongst the children because in that day, bread will be, the healing will be the children's bread. And he will come in those days in the last week of his ministry by the Spirit in the last days and zeal shall consume him once again and he will declare in that hour to that people in that generation my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. That was the first prophecy I ever heard. It's one of the only ones I remember because that one got in me. Empowered Women by Michael Ann and James Gall is a 40-day devotional journal crafted and articulated to inspire you, bring you hope, raise your faith, and draw you near to the God of strength and love. This devotional is on sale for only $10 plus shipping. Engage in 40 days of insight and revelation with empowered women. Call 866-980-5464 and mention television offer number 343. Go online to patriciaking.com or text BLESS to 42828. Go to patriciaking.com to browse our store's wonderful collection of downloadable resource. It's happened before. Revival fires fell. The presence of Almighty God swept over the earth and released massive waves of miracles, healings, signs, and wonders, setting hearts on fire. The Lord thy God has set thee free. The glory of God. This is an hour of restoration among the Catholics, the Protestants. Let the glory of thy presence be felt. This great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I believe the word of God. So, the land of the temple have been healed. It is happening again. 22 speakers unite. 
at the historic Angelus Temple to relight the revival fires and release an atmosphere of miracles, signs, and wonders. It's time for you to arise and be a woman on the front lines. A.J. Gordon said it something like this. You can do more than pray after you've prayed, but you can't do more than pray until you've prayed. I declare to you the three streams, the three tributaries of this prayer and worship stream are coming together, and I declare a no competition zone in Jesus' name. Number three, I'll try to do this one quicker. It's upgrade time. It's upgrade in the prophetic. The night that our dear Papa Bob Jones, seer prophet, went to be with the Lord, one of our dear prophetic friends had a very clear dream. And in this dream, Bob Jones says in a dream, no, I didn't say, Bob Jones literally said this. This was a dream, okay? But in the dream, Bob Jones says that he had to graduate so that, now this is me now putting my words to this, that a vacuum could be created so that the rest of us could come up higher because it was upgrade time. About six weeks ago, the voice of the Holy Spirit came to me, not in my heart. Now he comes there. But on a rare occasion, the external audible voice of the Lord comes to me. And it almost, ha almost happens in my bedroom. And he came to me recently, about six weeks ago, and he said this. The external audible voice of the Lord, the seed sown by the seers and the prophets into a younger generation decades ago have now come into fruition. Therefore, a detailed word of knowledge will be released again, creating an atmosphere of the fear of the Lord, awe and wonder. I want you to declare it's upgrade time. I want you to declare to him it's upgrade time. I want you to declare to him it's upgrade time. I want you to say right here, right now, I receive a prophetic upgrade of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, of the anointing of the Holy Spirit of signs and wonders for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. That's three declarations. Do you like this? Let me give you a fourth declaration. We have crossed a threshold into a time of fire. It is the time of fire. Matthew 3, 1, it is a declaration about John the Baptist, but then of Yeshua, that there was one who was coming who would come with the baptism of spirit and fire. Acts 2, verses 2 to 4, on the day of Pentecost, when it had fully come, there was tongues of fire that set on their head. There was the feeling of that resulted in, as it were, new wine, and there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. I'm not here just to tell Bob Jones stories, 
but it is good to note that this seer prophet, amongst uh, some others, that often in the Hebrew calendar, in the 10 days of all, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, etc., sometimes receives words then that's for the coming year or, or thereafter. And one of the things that Bob was shown on his last Day of Atonement on this side, he was given an egg. The egg opened up, and inside the egg was a flame of fire. That's his last word on the Day of Atonement. In the early years, Bob prophesied three movements that would happen. I'm not saying they're the only, and there's only three, but they are the, what he saw. The first, there would be a movement of new wine, and then the movement of new wine then would be followed by a movement of fire, and then the movement of fire then would be followed by a movement of the sound of a mighty rushing wind of the wind. For 20 years, we have celebrated the Father's blessing that has gone around the world from out of a little barn in Toronto. That I am declaring along with many others, we are crossing a threshold because it's time for fire. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 6, verse 9 to 13. That's one of my life passages that I wrote my first book, The Lost Art of Intercession, based out of that the fire shall be kept burning continually on the altar. It'll never go out. That the fire shall be kept burning continually on the altar, and it will never go out. That the fire will be kept burning continually on the altar, and it will never go out. Put your hand on your heart again. Because this is, we are the temple of the living God, and this is the place where there is supposed to be fresh fire. And so we kindle into a flame the very fire of God. And we declare that fire burns out dross and brings sanctification. So we declare, as Carol Arnott did at their 20th anniversary in Toronto, that there is now a new movement of the Holy Spirit. It's a movement of holiness. A movement of holiness and the fire of God. So I release it and I declare it over the airwaves. It's time for the real fire. Not wildfire, not strange fire, real fire, holy fire. We declare it's time for holy fire. And let our hearts have a road to Emmaus experience that through the word, through the word, through the word, God will open his word to us and we will be like those disciples and we will say, were our hearts burning, burning warmly within as he opened the word to us. The door of the harvest is open. It's time for the hour of prayer. Three, it's an upgrade in the prophetic. Four, it's a time of fire. Number five. I believe that we're crossing a threshold. I'm going to say specifically in the prophetic movement into what I am now terming redemptive interpreters. Redemptive interpretation. It doesn't necessarily take a prophet to say the problems are present. But there are a certain level of prophets or people that all they do is declare the problem. I am reaching. I see the problems, believe me. I'm not an ostrich with my head in the ground. It's a time for redemptive interpreters. 
solution prophets, not just problem prophets. In every place, I've been, Detroit's been put on my heart in this, these last few months. And I've been doing ministry back in Michigan and in Detroit. And, and the first night that I was there a few months recently, the Holy Spirit gives me a dream and he says, every place there's devastation, there'll be transformation. That takes redemptive interpretation. Where you see the darkness. We do not deny the darkness that Isaiah 60 says. There will be a darkness that will cover the earth, a gross and a deep darkness, even the people. But in that very hour, when it is the darkest, it is the hour when the light shall shine the brightest. Arise, shine, for my glory will be risen upon you. And even kings, 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 kings shall come to the brightness of that shining. In every place that there's devastation, there'll be transformation. And I'm trying in here with all that I know. I'm trying to shift myself. I want to be. <laughs> I want to be a hope ambassador. I declare it is time for redemptive interpreters to come forth. I say it is time for misery Christianity to end. And it's time for us to be clothed in the full armor of God and we will put back on the helmet of salvation and we will put back on the helmet of hope the positive expectation of good Vine's expository dictionary of Greek words for hope says it's the happy anticipation of good. Something good is just about to happen. Number six. Here's my eschatology. The glory and the shaking come together. Haggai 2, verses 2 to 9. We don't have time to go to there to read it all. But the latter glory of the house will be greater than the former. It was about the natural, the first temple. And they were so fascinated about its external glory. Even the queen of Sheba came to observe it. And people were in awe and wonder of its stature and its beauty. It was destroyed and a second temple was built. And a remnant of people remained. And, and they're like, oh, I just don't know if this is the same. And it's a parallel of restoration about the body of Christ. I tell you, the latter glory of the house will be greater. Number seven, my last point. This is one of the strongest words that is within me for 2014 and beyond. Joanne, it's the word restore. <laughs> In Acts chapter 3, verse 19 to 21, this is apostolic teaching. It says, repent. That's apostolic teaching. It says repent and return. 
that times in the plural, times of refreshing will come from somewhere called the presence of God. From the presence of God. Repent and return. The times of refreshing may come from the presence of God. And that Jesus will be restrained or retained in heaven until the fullness of the period of restoration of all things spoken by the holy prophets of old. Haggai 2 and Acts 3 kind of frame up the simplicity of my eschatology today. Jesus is held in heaven until the restoration of all things spoken by the holy prophets of old. Empowered Women by Michael Ann and James Gall is a 40-day devotional journal crafted and articulated to inspire you, bring you hope, raise your faith, and draw you near to the God of strength and love. This devotional is on sale for only $10 plus shipping. Engage in 40 days of insight and revelation with Empowered Women. Call 866-980-5464 and mention television offer number 343. Go online to patriciaking.com or text BLESS to 42828. Go to patriciaking.com to browse our store's wonderful collection of downloadable resources. It's happened before. Revival fires fell. The presence of Almighty God swept over the earth and released massive waves of miracles, healings, signs, and wonders, setting hearts on fire. The Lord thy God has set me free from the glory of God. This is an hour of restoration. Among the Catholics, the Protestants. Hallelujah. Let the glory of thy presence be felt. This great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I believe the word of God. So, the land of the temple has been healed. It is happening again. 22 speakers unite at the historic Angelus Temple to relight the revival fires and release an atmosphere of miracles, signs, and wonders. It's time for you to arise and be a woman on the front lines.